Camping World is giving away sponsorships to Truck Series teams, NASCAR tests at Circuit of the Americas today, and we're gonna talk about a few big name drivers who are off to sluggish starts so far in 2021. How's it going y'all? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. Super exciting day. Several drivers are in Austin, Texas testing Cup Series cars at Circuit of the Americas. So we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk about Kyle Busch and several others entering into the Bristol Dirt Nationals a couple weeks before the Bristol Dirt Race. We're also going to talk about Marcus Limonis almost single-handedly funding the entire Camping World Truck Series right now. But we have to thank today's episode's sponsor. Thank you to Swan Security Systems for supporting Out of the Groove and going all in for all things NASCAR. We saw them on Jordan Anderson's truck, which he finished second at in the Daytona season opener. We saw them on Ryan Vargas's car the last couple weeks as well. They're huge supporters of Out of the Groove on this show and the Out of the Groove Weekly Viewer's Guide, of course. They sent me one of their Swan Enforcer 4K Ultra HD DVR security systems. I've moved into a new place. I'm in a new studio setup, and I trust Swan to keep my valuable possessions safe. The Swan Enforcer features free local and cloud video recording. You can check in live anytime using their mobile app. The Swan Enforcer means business and our friends at Swan have a special offer for fans of Out of the Groove. You can check out their website down below and use checkout code GROOVE for 15% off any Swan products. Swan makes a fantastic product and they have become huge supporters of not just Out of the Groove, but NASCAR and several race teams as well. So shout out to Swan Security for sponsoring Out of the Groove and supporting the show. Lots of crunchy stuff to get to today. Let's start with the ongoing NASCAR Cup Series test at Circuit of the Americas. Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Chase Elliott made the trip out to Austin, one from Ford, one from Chevy, and one from Toyota, to make some practice laps and really get a feel for what tire compound Goodyear is going to settle on for the May race weekend. This test was closed to the public, so these clips are from Circuit of the Americas' official Twitter account. There's a few photos and some clips circulating online that I'm sure you can find, but pretty cool to see Cup Series cars making laps around the site of the U.S. Grand Prix. I mean, Circuit of the Americas was built to be a Formula One track, so it is pretty interesting to watch Cup Series cars try to take some of those, some of those tricky and treacherous corners. I'm super excited, though. I've been to Circuit of the Americas a few times, and I will be there again this May for the inaugural NASCAR weekend. I hope to see some of y'all out there. Also, some news this week, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, and other other NASCAR drivers are set to participate in the Bristol Dirt Nationals March 15th through 20th, about a week, week and a half before the Cup Series and Truck Series heads to Bristol. They'll be racing in different classes. Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson will take part in the Super Late Model Division. Joey Logano and actually Matt Crafton, I saw, will be racing in the Modified class. And it sounds like there are some other Cup Series drivers and perhaps some Truck Series drivers that we'll see hit the entry list here very, very soon. So a lot of NASCAR drivers want to get a better feel for dirt, especially drivers who have raced very little on dirt in their careers or have not raced dirt in a while makes a lot of sense. And I'm glad to see a lot of drivers taking this initiative, especially veteran drivers like Kyle Busch, Joey Logano. I'm glad that they're not just sitting by and expecting to coast through the Bristol Dirt Weekend with whatever skill or knowledge or experience they, they think they have. I like that they're taking this initiative. I mean, Bristol's a fun track. I'm sure they're jumping at the opportunity to participate. Joey Logano drove a dirt, I believe it was a dirt late model. I may be wrong about that. A few weeks back, it was not really highly publicized, but apparently he drove drove from like the back of the field up to like third. I don't know how stacked the field was in that event or exactly, but it sounds like Joey Logano has already put some practice laps in. So this is cool to see. I wonder what other drivers we may see join the entry list for the Bristol Dirt Nationals. I mean, Kyle Larson's racing it. Does Kyle Larson really need more Br Bristol Dirt practice? I mean, that just seems kind of like them sending Chase Elliott to Circuit of the Americas today. That just seems unfair. Does, does Chase Elliott really need more laps <laughs> at a road course? Same goes for Kyle Larson on dirt, but uh, he'll at least be able to give you a, a very honest opinion, I'm sure, of what the track conditions look like for the Bristol Dirt Nationals, because we've talked a lot about the immense number of laps expected that NASCAR is expected to run at the track during their race weekend, but we're forgetting that a week, week and a half beforehand, there's a whole bunch of other series, a whole bunch of other racing that's going to be happening on the surface. Plenty of time in between to adjust and prep the track, but Goodness me, Bristol is gonna get a workout. Bristol Dirt is going to be busy over the next few weeks, but man, it's starting to feel real. We're in March now, guys. This is Bristol Dirt Month. It's not a figment of our imagination anymore. It is happening, and it's, it's really starting to feel real. But I'm looking forward to it and glad to see a bunch of Cup Series drivers taking the initiative and not just sitting idly by. I expect maybe some of these guys to be contenders for the Cup Bristol Dirt Race. We're all kind of writing it off as, oh, Larson or Bell or somebody's already gonna win, but 
I mean, don't count out Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, you know? They're putting in the work. Anyway, let's talk about Marcus Limonis for just a moment. Call him Oprah Winfrey because he is just giving away gifts right now. Marcus Limonis is the owner, CEO, I don't know what he is, of Camping World, who is, of course, the title sponsor of the Truck Series. He took to Twitter yesterday to ask if there were any Truck Series teams that were without sponsorship heading into Las Vegas this weekend, and as expected, he got a lot of responses. But to my surprise, he didn't just, you know, go with one or two of them. No, no I have a feeling we're gonna see several blue and yellow Camping World trucks on track this weekend. I mean, look at some of these trucks. Uh, Jordan Anderson, Jesse Awuji, it looks like Sheldon Creed as well, which I'm really happy to see because I've been kind of commenting the last couple weeks that he's the defending series champion. And like last weekend at a Daytona road course, dude had a mostly blank white truck. Like the, come on, the defending series champion who's in a competitive truck, he's got to get sponsorship. Shout out to Marcus Limonis though for stepping up and supplying that team with some much needed funding. Look, he's tweeting this stuff out, you know, publicly. 15,000 for a wrap truck. Could the 15,000 turns into 25,000 with the top 10, 35 with the, like, like, look at this, $50,000 if you win in a Camping World sponsored truck this weekend. This is getting insane. I mean, this man just went out and, and basically pledged like $100,000 for this weekend to sponsor a fleet of trucks. I, it, it's really cool. It's really cool to see a guy with deep pockets really supporting the NASCAR Truck Series, the third of the you know three main NASCAR National Series, the series that often needs that extra bit of support. There's so many good things I could say about what Marcus Limonis and Camping World have done for the series, not just this year, but in recent years as well. He's certainly stepping up his game right now. NASCAR and the Truck Series specifically are super lucky to have someone like Marcus Limonis so invested in the sport, loves the sport, loves the series, wants to see it succeed, and believes that it is helping boost his brand. I mean, that's powerful stuff, and it shows you that NASCAR is still very valuable to many major companies. That being said, there are some concerns that came out of this whole thing. For one, you know, the fact that the defending champion Sheldon Creed was without sponsorship before Marcus Limonis rolled along. The fact that so many Truck Series teams, it sounded like, were basically knocking on Limonis' doorstep last night, his virtual Twitter doorstep, asking for funding, asking for sponsorship. You know, that is certainly a concern, but I will say, in some ways, this may be a compliment to the Truck Series' business model. The Truck Series, in some ways, is kind of what the Cup Series is going to look like in the next couple of years. You know, in the Truck Series, they all run the same engine. Toyota, Ford, Chevy, they're not spending money building out and developing their own special engines. It's all Ilmore engines. They're basically all virtually identical. That cuts a lot of costs and makes it a lot more affordable to run a competitive truck team. And that's why you've seen much deeper truck series fields the last couple of years. I keep reiterating it, but last year for a race in Atlanta, there were like 47 trucks on the entry list. And you know, typically a truck series field is only like 32, 36 trucks. 47 trucks won to race at Atlanta this year. We've seen 40 truck fields so far in 2021. So the truck series, while there are still many teams that are scrapping by, it's not glamorous work or anything by, by any means. There is still potential in the truck series. Team owners, drivers see that potential and believe it to be a somewhat viable business model. And the help from Marcus Limonis is obviously justifying that and obviously making it a whole lot easier. But while it's a little depressing to see so many truck series teams that needed sponsorship this weekend that were expecting to show up with very little funding. At the same time, the fact that they were still able to show up and still playing to show up and happy to show up with not as much funding may tell you a little bit about how the truck series business model works differently than the Xfinity or certainly the Cup Series model right now. It's gonna change a little bit with the next gen car next year, but I mean, again, I can't say enough good things about Camping World and Marcus Limonis. If you're in the market for an RV, I mean, they're not paying me to say this, but I certainly love the support they're showing for the Truck Series. Consider Camping World or Gander RV, whatever. Pretty cool to see the support he's pouring into the Truck Series, and it, I'm sure, means a lot to many of the drivers and teams that we were seeing on those Twitter threads last night. There were Xfinity teams also jumping in like, hey, can we get in on this? Limonis is consistent, though. Truck Series only. That's his baby. He believes in the trucks. Credit to him, love what he's doing, really, really awesome. I feel bad for the spotters this weekend, though. There could be a lot of blue and yellow trucks. Oh, that could be bad. <laughs> All right, let's talk more Cup Series stuff. We're three races into the Cup Series season as of now. We've officially wrapped up the Florida swing. And as the Cup Series leaves Florida and heads out west this weekend, there are several surprising stories near the top of the NASCAR point standings. There are also a few disappointments near or at the very bottom of the standings after just three races. It's still very, very early, but there are some drivers that have left a pretty bad first impression this year after those first three races. There are other drivers that have left 
really good impression. So today I'm going to talk about several surprising drivers in surprising points positions and we're going to talk about whether or not I believe in what we've seen from them so far this year or if I don't. If I think what we've seen so far is, is an anomaly and things are going to sort of get back to normal here before too long. So let's start with some of the more positive surprises. Drivers that are up near the top of the standings that I don't think coming into this year, any of us expected. One thing that's interesting, if you look at the actual NASCAR point standings, obviously with wins, those guys jump to the top and everything. But if we just look at the point standings, the top three are Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, and Joey Logano, and Chase Elliott's fifth. So as wild and unpredictable as this year has felt so far, the names at the top of the point standings are, are not surprising in the slightest. But let's start with a guy who has a win this year and is actually fourth in points, Michael McDowell. You know, Michael McDowell, it's a dream season so far. Daytona 500 winner, three straight top tens to open the season. Nobody saw this coming. We've talked about it at great length already. First, eighth, sixth. What? Do I believe what we're seeing is legit? Is it going to last for a at least the regular season? No, I, I don't particularly believe that Michael McDowell is going to continue to be a top five or top ten threat for the entirety of this season. But with that win at Daytona, he is most likely locked into the playoffs. So it's hard for me to say that I don't believe it. He's going to be a playoff driver. And the way he's running right now, he could be a round of 16 spoiler and sneak into the second round of the playoffs. I wouldn't completely be surprised by that at this point. It's a long season. Typically, we see teams sort of figure it out later in the year, start to catch up. Things will become a bit more competitive by the summer. So I'm not expecting McDowell to, to finish the year with like 20 top 10s or anything like that. But he is going to be in the playoffs, most likely. And he's off to a tremendous start. I don't think he's going to stay fourth in points, though. I'm sorry, Michael McDowell, but wow, what a start to this season. Let's talk about Austin Dillon, who is 11th in points, a very solid points position after these first three races. The only real blemish on his year so far was the Daytona road course. He was involved in an incident, finished 34. That's not a huge disappointment. I mean, Austin Dillon has never finished in the top 15 in any Cup Series road course races. So that certainly doesn't bode too well for him with, you know, five more road courses on the schedule before the playoffs even begin. But that being said, I believe it. I believe Austin Dillon looks like a playoff team right now, a team that could very well point their way into the playoffs. They may not have to sit back and rely on a fluke win like last year at Texas kind of was. Austin Dillon is up and down every single year from 2019, which was an awful year for that team, to 2020, which featured a win and a surprisingly solid start to the playoffs. And now this year's off to a pretty good start as well. I believe it. I think that three team is a playoff team, is certainly going to be in contention. Now, with drivers like Michael McDowell, Christopher Bell, William Byron scooping up all these wins early on, that puts a little bit more pressure on a guy like Austin Dillon, who is most likely going to be near that playoff cut line come August. But with the speed they've shown so far this year and that they showed at the end of last season, I think this team is at least somewhat for real. They could swoop in and steal another win this season without any of us really noticing. So I believe in Austin Dillon right now. Ryan Priest is currently 12th in points, a non-charter team. You know, that team's not even sure they're going to run the full schedule this year. But right now they're sitting pretty. I mean, two top tens at the two Daytona tracks. I, I, I don't believe that this team's going to stay in playoff contention. But wow, after last season was just a nightmare for this team. I remember they had like three straight last place finishes at one point last year. I... It couldn't have gotten any worse from last year, but they're off to a tremendous start this year. Way to bounce back. I don't believe they're going to stay 12th in points or even make the playoffs, but they're looking a whole lot better than they did last season, and that alone is a significant accomplishment. So I don't believe in it, but hey, he deserves a shout out for being 12th in points at this stage. Now, while those were some fun, positive underdog stories, we got to talk about some pretty big name drivers that are off to less than ideal starts this year. We'll start with Alex Bowman, who's currently 17th in points. Not too bad. He's still right there in playoff contention. We are just three races into the schedule, but Alex Bowman, I think will be fine. You know, he was involved in that big wreck at Daytona. It was not his fault. He was just an innocent bystander and he's bounced back to finish ninth and 10th of the last two weeks. He's going to be fine. I think many people have Alex Bowman making a deep run into the playoffs this year in his first year with Ally as his primary sponsor. I'm not too worried. Some people may be worried because right now he's on the outside looking in, but it's early. Alex Bowman will be fine. Let's talk about Kyle Busch right behind him in the standings, 18th on the grid at the moment. You know, outside of, you know, the season opening Bush clash where he kind of lucked into a victory, this team, this does not look like Kyle Bush. I feel like we've been saying that for a year and a half almost now, but you know, they scrapped together a 10th place finish at Miami, but they didn't look good. Do I believe it or not? I, I don't really believe it. I mean, I think they're going to be better than 18th. I think he'll make the playoffs still, but... Many of us were hoping, at least, that we'd see sh shades of the old dominant Kyle Busch this season. Yes, he has a new crew chief, but maybe that change of scenery would be good for Kyle Busch. But 
what we've seen these first three weeks, albeit three very different types of tracks, Kyle Busch does not look like he's back on track by any means. I, he might get more than one win this season, but anyone who thought, hey, a seven or eight win, you know, complete bounce back year for Kyle Busch, that doesn't seem likely right now, but it is early. We'll see what happens. I still think he makes the playoffs, so I don't, I don't buy that he's gonna finish outside the playoffs. They'll figure it out well enough to make the top 16. Now we're getting out into the boonies a little bit. What's going on with Ryan Blaney? 24th in points. I feel like he's been in a year and a half long slump. I know he won at Talladega last year. It's Talladega, he won by this much. But the narrative all last season was, he's got speed, he couldn't finish races. Sometimes it was his fault, many times it was not. This year, he doesn't even seem to have speed. I mean, of course, he was fast in the Bush Clash, got taken out by his buddy Chase Elliott. That was just bad luck. But since then, you know, wrong place, wrong time at Daytona. He was a non-factor at the Daytona road course, and he was slow at Miami until, you know, Eric Almarola wrecked him, but he wasn't a threat there before then anyways. So I'm not buying it. I think he'll be better than 24th, but I don't think he's a lock to make the playoffs anymore. The way, if you'd asked me a month, month and a half ago, I would've said, oh yeah, Blaney will make the playoffs. No, no issue, he doesn't have to worry. It's early, yes, but he's 24th in points and has shown very little speed outside of that, you know, season opening bush clash. That, there's reason to be concerned over there. Another driver that I just can never wrap my head around is Eric Almarola. Right now, 26th in points, did not fare very well in his home state of Florida. Of course, he was wrecked at Daytona, part of that big accident that was not his fault, so that was unfortunate. But then the Daytona road course, he was 17th, and then he didn't run well at Miami and took both himself and Ryan Blaney out of contention when he tried to clear himself from the center of the corner. Just a bad move, surprising from a veteran driver like Eric Almarola. I don't know what to make of Eric Almarola. I, I'm also kind of like Blaney. I'm not feeling nearly as confident as I was a couple weeks ago about his 2021 playoff chances. This is a huge year for him. As far as we know, he does not have a contract with SHR after this season. Smithfield slightly stepped back their partnership with him this year. So funding could become a concern. And if Eric Almarola, we know he's super consistent, but he's getting into this dangerous territory where as more surprising winners find victory lanes, taking those playoff spots. Eric Almarola could very well find himself in a virtual must win situation before too long. If they don't get things on track sooner rather than later, that's the situation he'll be in. And I do not trust Eric Almarola to win in a must win situation. He just, he hasn't in his career. I don't see him doing it this year. So I'm worried about Eric Almarola, but the guy I'm most worried about, holy moly, Matt DiBenedetto. Could you imagine a worse start to a season than what Matt DiBenedetto is going through right now? Matt DiBenedetto is behind Joey Gase, James Davison, and even Jamie McMurray in points. McMurray made one start. He ran the day 2500, that was it. Matt DiBenedetto is 34th in points. He has had a disastrous start to his 2021 season. His best finish this season was 28th at Miami this weekend. I haven't followed him that close this year. I know he's been involved in some incidents that you know weren't his fault. He got damaged at the Daytona road course because of someone else's doing. Like I understand it has not all been him, but man, I don't know what to make of Matt DiBenedetto. I'm sorry, Matt DiBenedetto fans. Two years ago, I was on the Matt DiBenedetto hype train, but that train has absolutely run out of steam in my opinion. Right now, things are spiraling out of control quickly. And while two years ago, I think Matt DiBenedetto's stock was at its highest after that runner-up finish in the Bristol Night Race, that was Matt DiBenedetto's peak. That's when everyone wanted him, fans loved him. All that's happened since then is has been an absolute crash in the market. Matt DiBenedetto has done nothing in the last year and three races now to make me believe he's a legit Cup Series superstar. I cut him some slack last year because it was his first team with a new team and they didn't have any practice sessions to really get a feel for each other. So I cut him a little bit of slack and he did still sneak into the playoffs by the finest hair on his chinny chin chin. But this year is off to a disastrous start. And with all the distractions off the track, you know, DiBenedetto looking for a new deal, things like that. I worry it will be harder than it would for any other team to get back on track quickly. So I'm concerned about Matt DiBenedetto. I'm sure many fans are as well. Right now, unfortunately, they just don't have speed. They don't have stability. And more than anything, they just don't have luck. <laughs> luck does matter in racing. It doesn't all come down to luck, but bad luck can certainly get in the way of a good run very, very easily. And it just feels like DiBenedetto has nothing going for him right now. So I hope I hope everything turns around for him because I'm still a Matt DiBenedetto fan. I want him to be great. I want him to succeed, but he isn't right now. And that has me concerned. 34th in points. I regret picking him to make the playoffs this preseason. I'm not feeling good about my prediction right now, especially with McDowell and Bell winning races and Byron. You know, the spots are filling up quick and he is in a deep, deep hole. Going to be tough to dig out. But let me know down in the comments. We've talked about a bunch of drivers here today. Which drivers are you most concerned about? Let me know down in the comment section. 
That's all I've got for this episode. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Of course, a huge thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters as well. I could not do this show without your continued support each and every month. A big thank you to Swan Security as well for sponsoring this episode. Use code Groove for 15% off your order. Their website is down in the description as well. Check out that Swan Enforcer. We have great supporters here at Out of the Groove. Really, really blessed. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care, y'all.